People always ask me when I first got interested in lace, but it's hard to pinpoint. The truth is, the pull towards traditional crafts and feminine frills feels innate to my being, and my passion for lace encompasses all aspects of my life. My name is Elena Kanegi Laux, and I'm a lace maker, historian, and founder of Brooklyn Lace Guild, an organization dedicated to the preservation of making lace by hand. I also work as a collection specialist at the Antonio Ratti Textile Center at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. My specialty is bobbin lace, a technique that evolved out of complex braiding in the early 16th century in Italy and Belgium, and has since spread to regions around the globe with their own unique traditions. Bobbin lace is made using anywhere from five pairs to a thousand pairs of bobbins that are each wound with an individual thread. The lace pattern, or pricking, is pinned to a bobbin pillow and then pairs of bobbins are hung on pins at the starting point. Working in pairs, bobbins are then crossed left over right or twisted right over left to follow the pattern below, and the stitches are secured with pins. I first began searching for a bobbin lace instructor back in 2011, but I couldn't find anyone locally in New York City. So I googled lace school and the first website that I came across was for the Idria Lace School in Slovenia. I ended up traveling there in 2012 for my first lesson in bobbin lace during their annual lace festival, and I was hooked. However, when I returned to New York, it was hard to continue my lace studies on my own. In 2015, I was awarded a grant through my alma mater, the Fashion Institute of Technology, to return to Europe and continue my lace studies. I traveled solo for four months across 14 different countries where I studied lace techniques at seven different lace schools, and it transformed my life. As part of the project, I also wanted to start a local lace guild in New York City, so in 2016, Brooklyn Lace Guild was born, founded with the only two other lace makers I knew in the metro area, Kaylin Garcia and Devin Fine. For the pandemic, our guild met monthly at the Textile Arts Center in Brooklyn, where I also teach bobbin lace classes, but now we meet online, which has actually allowed our membership to expand to a larger audience. In 2018, I earned a master's degree in costume studies from NYU, where I based my thesis on interviews that I had conducted with lace makers on my European travels. What I experienced over those months blew the lid off of any stereotypes or narrow ideas that I might have had about lace. Although historically lace was the domain of women who worked in their own homes or in girls' schools and convents, I met lace makers who were young and old, men and women, and everything in between. Each region has their own regional customs in lace making, using different tools, stitches, threads, and designs that run the gamut from microscopically fine to massive installations in rope. Today I feel that the more that I study lace, the more I realize how much there still is left to learn. It's an endless rabbit hole down which I've had the pleasure of plummeting. Because lace is so time consuming to make, I mostly have made smaller lace samples in the different techniques that I have studied. In fact, I have probably spent more time in the last eight years lecturing and writing about lace than actually making it, as it's challenging to find time on top of working full-time and running the guild. For this reason, my practice has shifted to become more process-oriented, and I often work in the medium of video. While I'm working at my lace pillow, I feel as though I am embodying all of the incredibly skilled lace makers who came before me, whose names have been lost to time, and I try to honor them through my work. The most complicated piece of lace I have made to date was a lace collar that I had the honor of making for the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In 2018, Brooklyn Lace Guild was approached by Columbia Law School to commission a custom lace collar to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the investiture of Justice Ginsburg to the United States Supreme Court. I worked with their creative director, Kara Van Warden, to create a design of repeating 25s, which I executed in torsion bobbin lace stitches using Egyptian cotton thread and a Japanese silk gimp or outline thread around the motifs. Overall, it took me around 300 hours using 100 bobbins, and it was the most important piece of lace that I have made to date. Now that so many classes and events have moved online and the medium has become far more accessible than when I searched for an instructor nearly 10 years ago, the future of lace is looking bright. I often hear people refer to lace making as a lost or dying art, but on the contrary, I see lace thriving and on the precipice of a major revival. My hope is that as an artist, I will not only be able to create more original works of my own lace, but that I will also be able to spread my passion for lace to the next generation.